What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So in this video, today's scent of the day, uh, absolutely head over heels in love with, which is the fragrance we'll start with today. It might even be in the thumbnail, who knows? But got me thinking, what's some of my favorite buys so far this summer? Now, not stuff that's been sent to me, because obviously as a reviewing channel, stuff gets sent to me from time to time. This is all stuff that I bought. Uh, some I found at rack stores, some I purchased from discounters online, like Fragrance Buyer, eBay, or Amazon. Uh, fragrance net places like that just they came from a variety of different places and some that though not summer fragrances they released and or were purchased around the start of summer but just stuff i've really been enjoying that i want to talk to you guys about so stay tuned Starting with what I'm wearing right now, I have four sprays on with a beautiful bubblegummy, sweet, fresh, somewhat sunscreen type scent profile and sillage going on. It's Paco Rabanne's One Million Parfum. I had been wanting to get this one for quite a while, and I'm so happy to have this fragrance now. It's lovely. It, it just is. It does do the scent profile justice. It does smell like a higher concentration version of the original. You lose some spice. It's much more it's it's more playful, I think, than even one million the original. Not as serious as the elixir or the Privé or anything like that. It's got this youthful, playful sweetness. The wife absolutely loves the way it smells. She was really enjoying my CIs when I after I sprayed and walked in the front and it was at its strongest. Really, really good stuff. Great performer. One of the sweet fragrances that kind of works in the hot weather because, boy, it is hot today. I even debated on not going with this because it's been so hot outside, but it's working just fine. Absolutely, one of my favorite pickups so far this summer is easily One Million Parfum. Now, I bought a lot of the fresher Mancera offerings in the last few months, and the one that, upon first impressions, I didn't even give it the highest rating of the group for that haul, but as time has progressed, it's become my favorite, easily my favorite, is French Riviera from Mancera. So this is a beautiful freshwater accord, breezy, airy, citrus, soft, creamy, slightly powdery, white floral tone. This stuff is really, really good. Such a great semi-casual, semi-professional, somewhat classy and elegant, laid-back vibe. Every time I'm recording a video, it never fails. Um, with really good performance. It's not going to overwhelm. It's not going to just punch somebody in the nose. It's pronounced. It's there. It's not intrusive. And it lasts a long time on my skin. This fragrance, this aroma all in itself is a vibe. It is this color scheme. That clear to oceanic blue. It's just that laid back Riviera type of feel. Coastline. Nice breeze in the shade under an umbrella. That's the vibe of this fragrance. I encourage you in trying this one because it doesn't smell like a bunch of other fragrances that I have, so uniqueness definitely plays to its strength, but it's just a beautiful scent. I love smelling this one. My favorite Mancera I've picked up this summer. It's from Riviera. This year's summer flanker in the CK1 line that hit rack stores immediately. I picked this up for 20 bucks. CK1 Reflections. So very zesty citrus, bright, and very musky. A clean, vibrant musk. Just so juicy, juicy and zesty. That's that's the thing. It's so inherently fresh, which is what the CK1 Summer Flankers are known for. That is their job. That is what they are created to be. Bright, uplifting, and invigorating. They don't last long. Though this one, admittedly, decent. Three to four hours. Not Doesn't project for three to four hours. After about 45 minutes, it's sitting pretty close to the skin. But three to four hour range before it's a faint, faded away skin scent. So... Decent for what it is. If you can find this one for 20 bucks at your Burlington, totally safe blind buy. Don't hesitate if you see any CK1 Summer Flanker at a rack store for 20 bucks, guys. It's not too often I'll say just just buy it. That I, That's how I feel. Go into it knowing it's so fresh, so airy, so uplifting, just built for a super hot day, but you're not going to get much performance out of these fragrances. This does better than years past. I have to say, this one in last year's summer days give you about three or four hours, whereas traditionally, you get about two hours most of the time. And look, you may get less. I'm not saying you're guaranteed to get three to four hours, but for 20 bucks, I don't know if moving forward I'll ever miss out on one of these annual summer releases because they're always pretty good, especially for 20 bucks. CK1, 
reflections. A blue fragrance that very much surprised me for its uniqueness, it offers itself the way it's built to be good for year round if you want fresh. It's very grounded at the same time because it's a leather aquatic. Don't really have too many of those. Kenzo Ohm Eau de Parfum. So my buddy Justin had been giving it some praise, which those of you not familiar with Justin Copeland's content, he doesn't really give too much praise to blue fragrance designers. So when he kind of stays on one for a little bit and continues to go back to it, it's usually a clear cut sign is there's something different or something special about it to him. And that's absolutely the case. So it does have a little bit of that watermelon aquatic feel from the original's DNA, the Eau de Toilette, which I do have the repackaging Eau de Toilette, which is this, this is the repackaging uh, Eau de Parfum. This is a beast though. Uh, the leather accord here offers a little bit of an earthy tone to go with this kind of robust and slightly dark and rich leather accord that they were able to create while still being marine and aquatic. It's crazy how they kind of melded both worlds together here. And like I said, you don't need a lot of sprays. You're gonna fill a room at five sprays, at least I do with this. It's a monster performer. It's a unique aquatic blue. Just There's nothing to not like about this fragrance in my opinion. Such a great pickup for this summer. I encourage you to try this one. Kenzo Ohm Eau de Parfum. Now, not too many people may be excited about this one. Hell, I might even have it in the thumbnail because I was so excited to get this one. I now have three, three of the four versions that have ever been released of this DNA, and this is the freshest. This is also the biggest bottle I have of the group. It's from Tom Ford. This is Costa Azura Aqua. This is the 100 ml. So I did a Tom Ford summer fragrance haul not that long ago, and this was the focal point. This is the one that I have spent time with so far. I mean, the signature line, EDP, and Parfum of this. I had previous experience with, but this one was a blind buy. I knew I would like it. It's very fresh, a little green, a little flowery. I believe there's some myrtle that gives us this odd, you know, flowery garden type of feel with the greens and the aquatics, and it's so fresh. You're not going to get a bunch of longevity out of this when it's bright and airy for about an hour. After about four hours, it's pretty much gone. And look, for the money, it's just not good enough for a lot of people, I understand, but I bought this for the experience. I absolutely did because for a few hours, it's a wonderful olfactive wearing experience for me personally. And I am moving to the beach in 14 days at the recording of this video. So I'm super excited. I bought this strategically because in two weeks I will be hanging out on the beach. And this is going to be one of the first fragrances in the rotation because this just screams classy yet casual beach vibe. I love this. I'm so glad to finally check this one off the list. I've been wanting it for a few years now and it finally made sense to add it to my collection and here it is. I'm super excited to have Tom Ford's Costa Azura Aqua. This next one's very impressive if you like tropical fruity fragrances. So my friend Hillary sent me a decant, this mystery decant pack where we did, it was a two-part series of live streams where I was just smelling them, seeing what I could pick up and they'd tell me what it is. They were numbered. This was my favorite out of all like 25 random decants they sent me and I went through the decant pretty quickly. I bought this from the website from Joe Love's Mango Tylon. So I haven't been wearing this bottle out since I got it because it's it's another one that's such a beach vibe, such a summer vibe that I can't wait. This is another one that I kind of bought to, for when I moved to the beach. So a very ripe like rind peel of the lime with a juicy ripe mango is the best way I can describe it with a peppery zest. I believe there's even some pepper of some sort in here that gives it that spicy, zesty tone. A little sharp. It'll sting the nostrils a little bit. Stings the nostrils. Uh, this is a beautiful fragrance. I encourage you to get a sample of this. Now look, shipping times, because it is coming from outside of the United States, takes time. It took me about three weeks to get this bottle in, uh, but it's worth sampling. If you can find it in the country, I would encourage you. It, it's not the safest blind buy, even though it's a tropical fruit fragrance. But I'll tell you what, I fell in love. It was love at first sniff, and I knew I was going to end up wanting a bottle of all like 25, 26, 27, whatever decants it was that, that her and Yara sent me. This was the one that stood out the most to me that said, buy a bottle. And that's what I did. I bought a bottle, no hesitation, full retail. Super happy to have it. This is great for anybody that just loves tropical fruits, especially mango, as the name indicates, mango and lime. That is... It's pretty much that simple. It's mango, lime, lime, and pepper 
is how you can look at this one. It's Joe Love Mango Tie Log. Now, in this video, this is purchase number two that I would formally like to blame Justin Copeland for because he kept going back to this one and making it sound really good, really versatile, right in my wheelhouse. And I have been raving about it ever since I got it because functionally, it's the most functionally wearable, versatile fragrance of the three out of four I have from Brioni, which is the Eau de Parfum Eclat. This is so good. Beautiful, sharp grapefruit. There's a little hit of incense, a vibrance of spice, light spice, very, very faint, but still there, of pink pepper with this fresh ambroxan musk combo. This is so good. In the realm, in the vein of like a Terre d'Hermes uh, Eau Givre, which is not in this video because I bought it way before the summer, even though it's a summer fragrance. So some of you are wondering, where is Eau Givre? I didn't buy it around summertime. I bought it like early spring <laughs> and I was just saving it for the summer. Uh, but had I bought it closer to this video, it'd definitely be in here. Eau Givre is amazing. Now, back to how this relates to it, it's because it's such a fresh, slightly woodsy grapefruit, but this is more of a musky grapefruit than woodsy overall. Uh, the Ambroxan doesn't make it too synthetic, though it comparatively to the Eau de Parfum and the Intense, it is a little bit sharper overall. Now that could be due to a few notes in the way it's blended, but very bright, vibrant, and fresh. Can dress up, can dress down. This is, when it comes to summertime, this is one of the most versatile summertime designers I think I've ever smelled. And I could see why Justin kept going to it, kept featuring it, kept recommending it. Because since I got it, I've been doing the same exact thing. Super happy that I picked this one up. It's Brioni Eau de Parfum Eclat. This next one was hands down the coolest fragrance I've ever found at Marshall's. Sure, I could have got it a little bit cheaper online, but part of the fun for me was finding it in the rack store. It is Creed Silver Mountain Water. I paid $250 for it boxed from Marshall's. I know I could have got it in the $200 range, but I mean, I had no problem paying a little bit more because it was just so cool to find it out in the wild. I know people are going to ask about batch codes. So here you go. It's a 2021 bottle. I believe it was November. If I remember correctly when I looked it up. Beautiful stuff. Anybody that's familiar with Silver Mountain Water, you know. This is a highly desirable scent profile when it comes to women. My wife, her favorite. Between this DNA and the fierce DNA, captivates her every time. And everything that smells like them, because I got a bunch of fragrances that smell like Silver Mountain Water. Same with Fierce, including Percival, Legend, all. All the usual suspects, Mercedes-Benz Man and such, which I have all the usual suspects for this as well, including Zerzhoff Mephisto, which I think is my personal favorite, but I do like the herbaceous hit that the T-Note provides from this one. It's much more inky and metallic overall because of the type of black currant used here with the citrus. Beautiful, watery, fresh and airy, metallic, musky. Just, there's nothing to not like about the scent profile. And a decent performer. This bottle is indeed a decent performer on my skin. And, uh, it was just really cool to find this at a Marshall. So yeah, this definitely had to go in here. One of my favorite pickups of the summer is Creed Silver Mountain Water. Now these last two are the two that I was talking about that aren't necessarily summer fragrances, but I mean, you can definitely wear this one in the summer. Uh, it's very woodsy. It's kind of similar to a few different things like Ralph's Club meets Diorome 2020. It's Mont Blanc Explorer Platinum, their newest release in this line with their most hyped and most popular being Explorer, which is kind of like Aventus. Like I said, this has kind of that aromatic woodsy tone at the top from Violet Leaf and stuff like that from Ralph's Club. With a hit of Diorum 2020, I, I very much smell the woody tones of Diorum 2020 in here. So versatile, so easy to wear. This could be a signature scent from someone. It absolutely could. Like I said, not a clear cut like fresh summertime aroma, but totally works in the summertime. If you like woody fragrances, woody aromatics specifically, this is super, super versatile, well done, well composed, not super original like a woody fragrance I've never smelled before. Uh, reminds me, like I said, of a few different things. Ralph's Club meets Diorum 2020, but that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Sometimes the familiarity with a little bit of a twist is a great addition to the collection. Now, if you have a ton of woody aromatics, sure, it's super redundant. If you have those two fragrances and you don't, you want to avoid redundancy, then you might want to avoid this one. But if you don't have those, or you don't mind exploring more of that style because you you know that's kind of your thing, is you really enjoy that style, this is one I would strongly encourage you checking out because it surprised me. I was excited about it when it got announced, and now that I've got it, it's even better than I hoped for, honestly. This is one of my favorite pickups 
so far this summer. It's Mont Blanc Explorer Platinum. Now I saved this one for last because there's nothing summertime about this. I would not encourage wearing this in the heat. I think they should have waited to the fall to release this one, but hey, they released it when they released it, which was right at the end of spring, right at the beginning of summer. But it's also one of the best designer releases of 2023, in my opinion. Some people might even say the best. Lamal Elixir. Yeah, nothing summertime about this. Aromatic, minty green, loads of vanilla. A little bit of spice, some wood, but loads of vanilla for sure. If you like vanilla, oh, you'll be in for a treat with this. Because it does tie to the Lamal DNA. That's very important to me when it comes to certain flankers, especially when we're talking oil concentration flankers, which Elixir is not necessarily an oil concentration flanker, but people expect rich, robust, and powerful when they hear Elixir, because that's kind of the standard that was set, especially with something like a Sauvage Elixir, One Million Elixir, which preceded this. Very rich and thick, typically a little sweeter. Sauvage Elixir, very spicy. This kind of a little bit of both of that, not near the spice, obviously, but stays true to the DNA more so than One Million Elixir and Dior Sauvage Elixir because you got to look for the DNA in those more with Sauvage Elixir. You don't get a lot of Sauvage in that, whereas you get a lot of Lamal here. And that's what's impressive to me is they didn't just go off of the namesake and try to capitalize on previous success of the name Lamal. They made what I believe could be a relatively true flanker for what I would consider the Elixir Flanker. They did a really good job. Like I said, there's some people that are going to say this is the best design release of the year. For me, it's at minimum top three. This is up there with stuff like Boss Descent Magnetic, for example. That's phenomenal. I still need to get a bottle of that. I have a decant, but it's another one that's really good. But I got this right at the beginning of summer of all times. They released this right before the hot weather here in the States, or right around the time it was starting to get really hot in the States. So it's not the best choice for the season but it's still one of my best pickups for the season so Jean-Paul Gaultier's Le Mal Elixir well that's the 10 that I have for you now look there's some really good stuff I've picked up that had to be omitted I could have did 15 could have did 20 sure but I wanted to keep it to 10 keep the video under 20 minutes because uh, I know I get to rambling sometimes when I want to make a point but I'm really digging all of these I would encourage you to sample all of them if you can and until next time do me a real quick favor go ahead and like comment subscribe because i do appreciate all the feedback and i love hearing from you guys of these 10 what have you picked up this year especially this summer what did you pick up this summer that's maybe like that one two or three favorites of what you've grabbed for the season let me know down below and until next time i will say if you get your hands on any of the 10 i picked up and you give them a spray now pretty confident you'll thank me later have a good one guys